This is a fifth in my series of extended videos about diagrams in the UML and SysML graphical languages. In this I'm going to cover state machine diagrams and it's a natural follow-on from my previous videos about class diagrams and composite structure diagrams. Whereas composite structure and class diagrams are types of structure diagram in UML, state machine diagrams are a type of behavior diagram and there's a relationship between the two in that classifiers shown on a structure diagram may have behavior that's described using a state machine. SysML inherits all of its state machine syntax directly from UML without modification, hence state machine diagrams also apply to blocks, a stereotype class in SysML. It probably doesn't take a genius to know what type of behavior state machine diagrams show, However, it's worth reviewing what we mean by state-based behavior and some of the history here, not least because Rhapsody has had a part to play in it. If you Google David Harrell and Rhapsody, then you'll probably find this paper. Additionally, if you Google history and David Harrell, then you might find this. At the very least, this paper will teach you that nothing is new and if you build something with strong foundations, then it will last. It will also help to understand why Rhapsody's state machines are the way they are, and how they might differ from other URL or SysML tools, as while both have had the same father, they have grown up with different pressures. Some things, like the mapping to generate readable C++ or C code that executes on embedded targets, is not something part of the URL or SysML standard. So let's have a quick look at some of those fundamentals. In this example, I'm going to model the emergency response of the UK government to the COVID-19 virus as a Harrell state chart. I'll use this to cover the syntax for triggered and guard based transitions or nested and orthogonal regions and time events. You need to draw a state machine for a classifier. I can't right click a package and create one. Rather, it needs to be an element such as a class or a block. Note that the term used by Rhapsody for the diagram is state chart rather than state machine diagram. I'm going to build the model completely from scratch and I'm building this example by reading a newspaper article written by the independent newspaper on the four phases of the UK's government response to the COVID-19 virus outbreak. The first phase in the government's response is called a containment phase. In the containment phase, you rapidly identify anyone who has the virus and quickly get them to a specialist infectious disease unit where they can be quarantined to prevent the virus from spreading. At the same time, you identify anybody who has been in contact with them and isolate them. The fundamental goal here is to stop the disease from spreading. Here we can see the basic syntax of an event-based transition. The event we react to is shown before the forward slash and the action or actions performed as a result of taking the transition are shown after the slash. The action I put here is actually assumed to be the invocation of an operation, hence I need to create the operation under the class if I want the state machine to execute. To do this, I'll just copy the text I typed and create a new element in the browser by pasting the name that matches it. The state chart has the same scope as the class that owns it. This means that we can also create attributes for the class and use them in the action and guard fields of the transitions. What I'll do is create an attribute to keep track of the number of infections. I can then use this attribute in the action field of the transition and I can get it to increment in value each time a new infection is detected. The second phase of the government's response is called the delay phase and starts when the virus has taken root in the UK and is freely spreading. This is where the government shifts to delay in the epidemic. The shift to the delay phase occurs when the number of infections exceeds a particular threshold. And we could show this on the diagram using a guard based transition. The purpose of the delay phase is to reduce the number of people who become severely ill at the same time to prevent it from overwhelming the National Health Service, which does not have enough critical care beds for everyone who may need them. A guard is a Boolean condition that evaluates true or false and is shown in square brackets. In this case, this is a null trigger transition which has no event. This will be tested on entry to the owning state, hence it's important that the transition that changes the number of infections exits and re-enters here as it will cause the number of infections to be tested each time the attribute changes. 
The delay strategy is designed to soften the peak of the epidemic. When this transition occurs, the government will postpone or cancel large events and it will close schools. This allows me to illustrate a key aspect of Harrell's state machine notation, which is that states are persistent conditions of existence where the system reacts to certain events or stimulus, and actions are actually performed on transitions rather than in the states. Rapsi has this Intellivisor feature that can be used to auto-populate a correct name by starting to type something and pressing the Control plus space key. For a state machine like this, where there's more than one state, I need to say which state the classifier will start in. I must do this with a default transition. State machines in RAPSD are fully executable. So what I'm going to do is to drop a couple of panel widgets onto the diagram. Uh, firstly, one that will allow me to inject an event. What I'll do is bind this to the identify infections event that's stimulating the state machine. The panel widgets here are related to the panel diagram which is licensed by the Tools and Utilities add-on currently. I'll also add another widget that will allow me to inspect the values of the attributes, and I'll bind this to the number of infections attribute owned by the government response class. I'm then going to build and run the state machine, so I'll get Rhapsody to create an executable with an instance of the class running inside it. Rhapsody actually generates C++ for the state machine, and then invokes the compiler to build and link it with something it calls the Object Execution Framework. The object execution framework handles additional capabilities such as threading and time and the queues associated with the asynchronous events sent between reactive classes. Once you run something, then you immediately spot the issues. We can see here that the number of infections attribute was not initialized. And if I look at the animated state chart, I can see what happens when we interact with it. For example, we're not reacting to the identification of infections when we're in the delay phase because we did not put this as an event on an outgoing transition. So let's stop the execution and make some corrections to the model. Firstly, by initializing the number of infections to zero, and then by getting the delay state to react to the same event and in the same way as the containment state. This allows me to illustrate a key part of the syntax, which is nested states. If I have two or more states that react to the same events in the same way, then I can put them inside a parent state and draw the common transitions from that. Note that if I exit and re-enter the parent state here, then the state machine will retake the default transition and re-enter the containment state. This is not something I want to happen, and therefore I need to make a further change to the model to correct this. Conveniently, this allows me to illustrate another aspect of the syntax, called a reaction in state. A reaction in state is used where we want a classifier to react to an event with our exiting and re-entering. In RAPSD, this can be entered in the feature dialog of the state. Once we've done this, we can then toggle the display of it on the diagram by clicking the icon in the top right of the state's graphical element. Before building and running, I'm going to create a sequence diagram with a classifier as a lifeline and also a system border. I'll then choose close all but this and run again. An animated sequence diagram like this allows us to visualize a linear view of the state of the classifier over time and how it reacts to events. As I go over the threshold, therefore, we can see that the government's response moves from the containment to the delay phase. Once in the delay phase, we cannot return. It's what essentially is called a dead state. However, it does give me an opportunity to demonstrate two further aspects of state machine syntax, parallel or orthogonal states and time events. We can draw a parallel or orthogonal region using an AND line. So I'll first resize the owning state and then I'll draw an AND line from the top line to the bottom. In that, I'll put a monitoring state and then I'll show over a certain period of time that people will recover. Notice that this is a time event. In UML, the syntax for this would be the word after, whereas Rhapsody uses the keyword TM. In the brackets is the time interval that you want to set the time of four in milliseconds. I'm implementing the decrementing of the number of infections using an operation. While I could access the attribute directly on the transition, two benefits of an operation are that they can be reused 
and also that they would be visible on an animating sequence. Note that the action syntax I'm using here is C++. Rhapsody also has an abstract action language syntax, but the C++ syntax is more widely known, and hence I'm just using that. Let's put the return transition in, which occurs if the number of infections is less than or equal to the delay threshold. When writing guard page transitions, you need to make sure that they don't overlap. I'll also expand the two states to a third, more serious phase, which the UK government has called the mitigate phase. This is the final phase of the government strategy and is effectively triggered once the disease is widespread and unable to be stopped or even slowed. At this stage, the emphasis will shift to saving as many lives as possible and maintaining public order and the continuity of public services. I'll add an attribute called the mitigate threshold and set this to an arbitrary value for the purposes of simulation. Like the transition from the containment to the delay state, I'll add a guard base transition that will cause the response to transition into the mitigate phase if the higher threshold value is exceeded. It's at this stage that we would see some of the more extreme measures taken by the government to try and keep the country going. Hospitals will cancel operations and in extreme cases doctors will be forced to ration care to those most likely to benefit. Also the British Army could be deployed onto the streets and the government could enforce work from home to prevent the movement of people. When using operations as actions, it's often easier to enter them first in the browser and then use Rhapsody's Intellivisor feature to auto-populate. As well as speeding up model creation, this reduces the chance of typos. Note that I'm adding a semicolon here as the text is going to be put directly into the C++ that is generated. This gives us a more complete model. We now have three clear phases of the government's response model together with guard, time and event-based transitions that occur. The state machine therefore starts to get a bit more interesting when we execute it. At this stage, let's run the state chart again. With the introduction of a time element, we can now see a more continuous form of behavioural model, in addition to the reactive behaviour that comes from an ejecting events. We can see the impact of the class reacting to external events and changing state as a result. We can also see the impact of time events in the orthogonal region, causing guard-based transitions to be taken in the main region. This brings us to a fourth phase of the government's response, which is called research. The research phase is a wonderful example of an orthogonal region. It's something that runs concurrently in parallel to the state we've already identified. Again, I could draw another parallel region by adding an AND line. In this region, I might identify a simple OR state machine with a research state that has two nested states. The research phase might be categorised by a period where we look for drugs, followed by a period where we deploy the drugs. It may be that we can't find a vaccine. However, deployment of drugs may reduce the severity and prevalence of infections, and therefore act to reduce the overall number. I'll model this by adding a time event that acts to reduce the number of infected people. I'll put a slightly smaller time interval and reuse the people recover operation that I created earlier. Before running, I'll just add a button to simulate the drugs found event. The easiest way to do this in Rhapsody is to copy and paste an existing button as it will pick up all the existing display options in the bound element, which I can then easily change. Let's do a final run then to see how the state machine behaves. The great thing about state machines is that when you execute them, they really come alive. Watching how a clock moves is a lot different to viewing a static picture of one. Of course, these different regions do influence each other. If we delay the spread of the virus for longer, then this gives more opportunity to develop a cure or ways of lessening the impact on the vulnerable people in society. There are, of course, other elements to consider. However, this concludes the demonstration. In this, we covered event, guard and time-based transitions, as well as or parallel and nested states. For me, the key thing about state machines is the succinct and intuitive nature of their syntax, and the power of the notation to quickly express powerful behavioural constructs that are quite common to describe. They also come alive when you have the ability to run them and interact with them, hence are fundamentally designed for modelling reactive event-based behaviour and exploring or implementing how a system might respond. 
Hi, my name is Fraser Chaban and I specialize in tool-based training and consulting IBM products, including the ability to do web deliveries across multiple geographies. And using Java automation, I can simplify and speed up the modeling tasks that your users have to make so that they can focus on the creative and fun aspects of systems and software engineering. If you do have any questions, then feel free to contact me. Here's my email address.